So for undergraduate opportunities, there's a lot of agricultural opportunities for students at that level. So there's animal science, looking at how do cows grow, what type of things do they eat, uh, how to maintain their health, veterinary sciences, becoming a veterinarian. There's plant, uh, horticultural and crop sciences, looking at what types of plants to grow. There's agricultural engineering, how do you design facilities that cows live in? How do you design tractors to perform better? How do you maintain soil health? How do you produce energy on farms? So all those opportunities exist at an undergraduate level. At master's and PhD level, things become a little more specific, still related to those fields. There's just lots of opportunities for master's and PhD related to agriculture. A lot of the students I get are really well prepared in high school. The, the two areas that, that I note are, are writing, so I think students need more practice in writing. And then many students understand very well different disciplines, so they understand math very well or chemistry very well, but they don't understand how, these, how they go together. So how do you use math equations to solve chemistry problems? How do nutrients flow from a man-made setting to a natural environment and back? And I, and I think with ecology, with looking at systems and linking these things together, I think the students would be better served if they could have those type of experiences in high school before they come to universities or colleges. One key area is those uh, instructors that are focused on teaching the science courses and the math courses that would really help is um, giving them some type of project-based activities. Many times in engineering, especially agricultural engineering or environmental, we're going to be working in, in multidisciplinary teams. And one of the things that the students mention often in the engineering innovation class at the University of Dayton is that uh, they really appreciate that this course gives them more experience working on design teams and working on more open-ended projects. They talk about the fact that maybe they, they, they understand the trigonometry, they understand uh, the algebra and the geometry that they're doing, and even the calculus, but they're typically applying it in terms of very specific problems that they're practicing to build those skills and how do I use or, or, or apply certain concepts within those particular classes. But then within the project, they are excited about the fact that now I see how I can use geometry or I can use trigonometry to help me do this calculation to size something or to figure out um, how much force would be needed if I'm going to design the shovel in this manner or versus a, a different manner that's going to be more ergonomic. And so they get more excited about the fact that they're taking some of the foundation knowledge that they have and applying it uh, more readily to a problem or a very open-ended problem. The hooks teacher, teachers might use are real-world problems, I think. So looking at bioenergy production, there's very simple experiments that high school teachers can do. So one of the things that I've done the last couple years is actually teach high school students where I use a, a very small 200 milliliter plastic jar. And with that, you can build your own digester. So you can add your own organic feedstock to that, seal it up, measure the amount of biogas you produce. Looking at food production, you could grow beans, you could grow different things in a class, you could give more light to one, less light to one, and things like that. Uh, I think real world problems are what interest people, um, and, and you know, they interest adults, they interest students as well.